Today, telephone has become an integral part of our life. It has evolved over the years with newer technology leading to mobile phones. Days of looking for a phone booth and waiting in queues to make that urgent call are thankfully over. You can now stay connected with people from the remotest of places and attend an emergency faster. Mobile phones have indeed made our life so much easier. This newer technology has also brought in some concern of radiation hazards. Today, mobile phone users and people living within close range of the mobile phone base stations have become increasingly concerned over the potential harmful effects of radio frequency radiation produced by these devices to their health. A number of contradictory opinions in the media has left people more confused. Apart from the mobile phone radiation, we are surrounded by several radiating elements in our daily life like TVs, microwave ovens, radios, remote control. Actually, radiations are everywhere and all around us. Even natural sunlight has ultraviolet rays. Mobile phone base stations transmit and receive calls. Being two-way radios, they produce RF radiation to communicate. RF radiations emitted by the towers are a part of electromagnetic spectrum which comprises of non-ionizing and ionizing radiations. Non-ionizing radiation is of low frequency and therefore not harmful whereas the ionizing radiations are of high frequency rays such as X-rays, gamma rays which can damage the biological tissues, power lines, mobile phones, household electrical appliances, AM and FM radios etc. are of extreme low frequency and lie in the non-ionizing range of spectrum therefore are not harmful. Exposure of the human body to RF radiation is measured by power density which is the power incident on human body per unit area. International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection or ICNIRP in cooperation with Environmental Health Division of WHO that is the World Health Organization set standards for emission levels which are considered to be the safest. And so my, my presence here is not to convince India or, in other, or any other country to adopt the ICNIC guidelines by the way they have to a larger extent already been uh, adopted, implemented in this country. The ICNIRP guidelines are followed in various countries across the globe. In India, the cellular global services for mobile communication, that is GSM services, are being operated in 900 MHz and 1800 MHz frequency band. For 900 MHz band, ICNIRP has limited the permissible power density at 4.6 Watt per square meter and for 1800 MHz band, the permissible power density is 9.2 Watts per square meter. The threshold limit, which is when the body actually starts feeling the effects of the radiation is 230 Watt per square meter for 900 MHz and 460 Watt per square meter for 1800 MHz from which the ICNIRP limit is 50 times lower. In India, the Director of Telecommunication from 1st April has proposed that the limit of the power density for 900 MHz should be 0.46 Watt per square meter and for 1800 MHz it should be 0.92 Watt per square meter which is 10 times lower than the ICNIRP guidelines and 500 times lower than the threshold limits. But this is not implemented as it is yet to be accepted by the Cellular Operators Association of India. The power density depends on the transmitter's power, antenna design and location, and distance from the antenna. This measurement is used to determine whether 
a mobile phone operator complies with the safety guidelines. All the mobile operators in India are following the ICNIRP norms and submitting the self-certification for each tower for compliance of radiation norms. A penalty of 5 lakh rupees is applicable if any mobile operator is found not meeting the norms. Radiation travels in a straight line. The communication tower mounted on a building faces outwards and therefore 99% of the radiation emitted from it travels away from the building and only 1% moves downwards towards the building. Radiation is a compound effect of multiple towers at any given point. Therefore, removing a tower will not mean that you are not exposed to radiation. The International Agency for Research on Cancer, IARC, a WHO specialized agency, regularly runs assessment of the carcinogenic hazards or cancer-causing agents posed to human by a variety of agents, mixtures and exposures which are classified as Group 1. Proven to be carcinogenic to humans are alcoholic beverages, asbestos, arsenic, benzene, formaldehyde, ionizing radiations, tobacco chewing and smoking, paint, sunlight, etc. Group 2. Probably carcinogenic to humans are hairdressers, barbers, petroleum refining. Group 3. Insufficient evidence as carcinogenic to humans are coffee, diesel, magnetic fields, dry cleaning, pickled vegetables, styrene. Group 4. Not classifiable, electrical fields, chlorinated drinking water, hair coloring, fluorescent lighting, acrylic acid. To lower the standards for the antennas and uh, towers, I have not seen any scientific evidence to lower these standards. Just two weeks ago, I was at a meeting in Rajasthan, in Jaipur, and the same issues were raised, and people were asking me questions about the safety of uh, TV towers and uh, uh, antennas. I just asked the audience that how many people are willing to forego the use of cell phones. None of them raised their hands, but they are concerned about the towers. I see no evidence as an independent scientist that there could be a danger for the existing limits and the, the, the limits should be lower. Power multiplied as by an time is energy. You cannot define power without defining the time limit. The question you asked is that, is it, is it applicable for one hour or one week or one month or one year? I would like to say that I am a scientist who worked with this sort of systems, both in animals and in cells. We have exposed the cells for 10 watts per kilogram for 24 hours or whole lifetime of the animals. And we have not seen any cancers or any ill effects on those animals. We have exposed the animals for two years continuously at 5 watts per kilogram or 10 watts per kilogram. It is not just for one hour or one week or one month. It is for the whole lifetime. The animals were kept in the cage constantly exposed to these RF fields. Okay? That gives you the answer whether it is for one hour or one month or one year. They are exposed for two years. The experts in the health industry have really not found anything which is scientifically documented, which says that there is a risk of tumor being generated in the head or any ear problem coming up or maybe the pacemakers going haywire if the cell phones vibrate. So, go ahead and take that call. You have nothing to worry about.